Okay, well, everybody, welcome to the Ted Holiday Roast. Hey, there you Ted, I don't really know if you should be flattered or offended that these people came tonight. <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff going on, so it must mean we, we kind of like you somewhat. So what we're going to do is we're going to have about, we're going to have, you know, five or so roast, and then we're going to have a performance by Ian Bell. Um, so I'm going to get right into it, and we're going to have our first roaster. It's funny. Um, Jeremy Nooner is our, our first roaster, and honestly, I email him sometime, and I never get a response back. But, but I emailed him this time. He's like, ah, oh, yeah, <laughs> right away. I'm in for that. So now I know how to get him. No. Anyway, so without further ado, let's start the roast. You look good up there. Let's have Jeremy Nooner as our first roaster. <laughs> get talked into this? Oh, is this thing on? I'm sorry. Um, hi. Uh, so look, let's just uh, forget the niceties, because there aren't any, and just sort of dive right in. Um, you know, Ted is the, is the only guy in Santa Cruz who I know who actually smells like a girl. Um, and it's really, it's, it's, it's funny, because, you know, Ted smells the way we used to think that men should smell, right? You know, tobacco and bourbon and leather and sweat and grit, right? Like, this is, this is Ted, right? And then every now and then you get, like, you know, a hint of, you know, cucumber or, or, or rose water or, you know, cinnamon or maybe, like, a, a little undertone of lavender. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? So, so, I, I, I'm, so one day, this isn't as weird as it sounds, one day I'm smelling Ted and, um, <laughs> and, I, and I decide, okay, I have to sort of get to the bottom of this, right? So, uh, so I go into, into Ted's studio. It's called Studio Holiday. Ted named the studio after himself, which really <laughs> should surprise nobody, right? Um, and so I, I go into Studio Holiday, and it, it has all the things you'd expect it to have. It's like the, you know, these gleaming, like, you know, beautiful photographs that are wonderfully framed, and these you know, gorgeous iMac computers that he does all of his design on. It looks really great, right? Um, but then Ted, he actually in Studio Holiday for a long time, over on, on the west side was, was this one of these live work joints, right? So um, I, I discovered that, that Ted likes to keep the meetings really short because he doesn't want people to have to stay long enough to go to the bathroom, right? Um, so, so, um, so I'm there, and I forget why I was there. Um, I'm sure to, to, to work uh, with or for one of you know, Ted's amazing clients and one of these great projects that he's working on. But look, the meeting goes like an hour, hour and a half, and I kind of got to go, right? And so I go upstairs. I don't even ask. I'm like, oh, sure, I could use the guy's bathroom, right? And you open the door, and there it is, right? You open the door, <laughs> and along the back of the sink, along the top of the toilet, along like three or four shelves above the toilet are all the products, right? <laughs> and I have never seen this many, you know, gels, pomades, <laughs> mousses, tinctures, ointments, right? And, and none of them are from the United States. These are all like imported from like, you know, Europe and Asia and all places where people apparently smell better. Um, and, and, and so this, this is it. I, f I discover like, hey, this, this is finally what does it. I'm like, but come on, like you can't, you can't use all of these all at once, right? And then I discovered something about Ted. This is something you guys, many, many of you don't know about Ted, that um, he's only, he only comes up to like Darren's shoulder in real life, like Darren's shoulder in the chair, right? And the rest of it is the hair, right? I mean, and you, you think that he's got this thing going on. It's like he's a tall guy, he's like, you know, 6'2", whatever. No, no, Ted's like four foot eight, and the rest of it is, is, is the hair. Um, I should stop here, and I should probably mention um, that us roasters have a little discussion beforehand. Um, and have you guys ever played that, that drinking game where, you know, whenever one of the characters in the movie talks that you drink? So anytime one of us mentions the hair, you guys have to do something crazy. Like, you'll have to do, do push-ups or something like that. So is that cool? Can we do that? Can we agree to do that? Because let's just say you all are going to be pretty buff by the end of the night because I think we'll mention the hair more, more than a couple of times. Um, so, so um, Ted, the, the, the hair, like, I mean... You know, most people have this sort of like Napoleon complex, right? Like, I'm only five foot six, so I have a little pompadour going on. I mean, you're already like six four, right? So, is there something else you're trying to compensate for, or what's <laughs> what's going on with, with with the hair thing? Because I know, I know, your children are here. What do you want me to do? 
Um, and yeah, baby, my girlfriend. Uh, yeah, a couple of them actually. Um, so, um, um, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes when you do these things, there's collateral damage. What can I say? Um, so, uh, and Ted's children are here. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, no, it's good. So, but here's the thing. Like, all right, so now. Ted no longer lives at this sort of work live place. He lives, get this, he lives in an Airstream trailer in the woods, okay? Um, so how many people, if you, all that, of all the people that you know, right, all the crazy survivalist, hippie, off the grid people in Santa Cruz, right? Those are the ones, right? You look at it, it's like, oh yeah, Ted, totally, he's that guy, he's gonna totally move to a trailer in the woods, right? I mean, come on. Yet somehow this is what he's decided to do. Um, two trailers, actually. One for him and then one for the products. But, um, um, but think about this. Like, you know, if, if, you know, most people go to, go to the woods because they're trying to, like, you know, like, escape or they're, you know, they want to be a little bit more rugged and survivalist and they, they want to know that they can kind of, you know, survive on their own, right? Did you just flick me off? Is that what? Is that? Oh, 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 I thought, I'm sorry. I thought there was a, it's like, that's just, so, so, you know, here, here's what I'm envisioning, like, so the zombie apocalypse comes, right? And you got all these survivalists up sort of in like the Ben Lomond woods or wherever you are, right? And, and they've, got, they've got their generators and they have like their, all their prepackaged meals and like, you know, and they're all ready to sort of fight off together the zombie apocalypse. I mean, what's Ted gonna do? Like, he's gonna like moose them and stuff like that when the <laughs> zombie hordes come? Like, you know, hold on, Mr. Zombie, you need a little pomade on that here to spruce you up before you suck my brain out. Um, so, what do, are you the only guy with all the products in the Airstream up there in your little survivalist camp? I mean, is that, do, you, do you barter for that stuff? Do you be like, hey, I'll give you like half of a skinned deer or something if you give me like, you know, a, a bottle of Paul Mitchell L'Oreal moose stuff? I mean, how does that work? Not a rhetorical question. <laughs> I mean, like... No, I, I have products to last me for the next year. Right, so, right. One Airstream trailer full of products for the next year, right? So again, I guess, again, if you're only five foot six or four foot eight or whatever I said before, and the rest of your bulk is made up by the, you probably, that's, that's I'm surprised it even lasts you that long. Um, uh, okay, so this is the moment, I think, in the roast where we say, but seriously, folks, am I supposed to do that part? I'm going to do that part, right? So this, but seriously, folks. Ted Holiday. Um, when I got to Santa Cruz, I was a new guy about seven or eight years ago, new to town, and Ted was one of the first guys that I met. Um, and I really had no idea where the hell I had landed. I knew there was a lot of the crazy hippie survivalists here, but then there was a guy like Ted who's like, oh my God, you belong in like, you know, like, like Soho or the Castro or someplace like that, um, or the hate, you know. <laughs> Metrosexualism becomes you, Ted, what can I say? Um, how many of your girlfriends are here tonight, Ted? Um, so, so uh, Ted was one of the first guys that I met, and I realized that was the first guy that I knew who, who made me believe that there really were cool, smart, interesting, uh, talented people in Santa Cruz that, that I wanted to know and I wanted to hang out with. And nobody, I think, has been more dedicated uh, than Ted to trying to make this uh, a great town and put it on the map and really, you know, true, true to what he does for a living, kind of rebrand the town and help, help people like me and people all over the country and all over the world understand that Santa Cruz is a great place where smart people, talented people, interesting people, creative people uh, are, are, are here. So Ted, thanks for contributing to that. Um, thank you for... <laughs> thank you for the pompadour, which is the gift that just keeps on giving, as I'm sure you're about to find out. And uh, thanks for being a good friend, dude. That's all. That's all I got. Have a great start. Thanks, Jeremy. So me and Ted have been texting each other a lot recently about this, and his last text was, I hate you. <laughs> okay, so let's go to our next next performer, next roaster. And we have Eric Johnson from Hill Chomper. Thanks, Matthew. Um, I brought notes. I didn't think we were supposed to be nice. I, I, I couldn't. That's, you're <laughs> cheating, man. I didn't know. I don't know. Okay, well, you got it out of the way. That's, I, I, don't have to, I don't have to deal with it, so that's fine. That works. Um, how's my hair? My hair okay? Yeah, lovely. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I think Matthew invited me here tonight because I'm like Ted's opposite. Um, not just obvious looks department, but you know, Ted is, um, you know, he's a stylish guy. He's a flashy guy. Um, you know, he, he really just doesn't care what people think. He's, you know, um, uh, he's, 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 he's a little bit, maybe, maybe, maybe he's a little bit arrogant sometimes. I mean, um, you know, Ted can be rude sometimes. Um, you know, obviously conceited. Um, um, you know, sort of on the surface, Ted can be just a complete dick. But, but you know, whereas, you know, I have this sort of, a personality as like Mr. Nice Guy, I'm Mr. Friendly, I've always got a big smile on my face, I'm a good listener. Um, and if any of you think that about me, it's because we've socialized and if we've been socializing, I've been drinking. And when I'm drinking, I'm kind of awesome. But um, when I'm sober and when I'm caffeinated, my true self comes out and I really can be kind of a petty little asshole. Um, and Matthew knows this because we work together. and. Um, um, I think that's why he invited me here tonight. So um, when I first met Ted, it was at the tech raising uh, in, the sp in the spring or the fall of 2012. <clears throat> and if you've been to tech raising, it's like uh, Coachella for, for geeks. Um, it's a weekend long um, a hackathon. Uh, Margaret wouldn't want me to call it a hackathon, but that's basically what it is. It's a hackathon. Um, and unlike Coachella, nobody goes to tech raising because they're cool or attractive. <laughs> Um, you know, anybody walking past the, you know, cruise I.O. and looking in that big window and wondering what's going on in there, they would be able to figure it out just by the people that are in there because, you know, it's, it's nerds. It's like there's clusters of men, each surrounding one female. Um, you've got the, the big guys with the bald spot and the ponytail. You've got the 20-year-olds whose voices haven't changed yet. Um, you've got Santa Cruz's entire Asian community is there. And, and... And Ted is there. So I was, it was my first introduction to the, the tech community in, in Santa Cruz. I've now been, uh, has now embraced me, thank God. But um, I was looking at Ted and I was thinking, you know, th it was unusual. And one thing I noticed, he was wearing a hat and it had a picture of a rooster on it. And underneath it, it said the word cock. And I thought, wow, that guy's really something. And then he took the hat off. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, I was really nervous. Nice. <laughs> oh, so I'm like, who is this guy? Is uh, you know, like, is he a rock star? Um, you know, is he a junkie? Is is he a poser? And then I thought, wait a minute, is that Ian Bell? <laughs> Ian got it. Ian got it. Um, oh, so Ted's there, and he's got his camera, and he's not being shy. He is. You know, everybody's kind of sitting around, and Ted's, you know, he's click, click, you know, and he's click, click, except for it's silent, because he's rocking a Leica, and that's so cool that you don't even know what I'm talking about. That's how cool that camera is. And uh, so then we all pitched, and Ted made this pitch, and he talked about doing this thing he was calling Impact 831, and that was going to be, he was going to document all the cool upcoming or upstart businesses in Santa Cruz. So like Verve, uh, Stripe, uh, Verve. Uh, Cameron Marks, um, Fuse Architects, Verve, um, <laughs> El Salchichero, and Verve. And it was just the places that Ted thinks are cool. And actually, I was really interested, and I'm a journalist, and I thought, and uh, tech raising is all about collaborating, and I thought, you know, I may work with that guy. And then, poof, he was gone. Saturday, no Ted. Sunday, no Ted. Never saw him again for six months until Matthew called and suggested that we, at the next tech raising, create a magazine in uh, 48 hours. So we would show up on Friday, do a bunch of reporting, take a bunch of pictures, write the thing, edit it. Uh, Ted and his team would put it together and have it for sale Sunday. And I thought, that's fucking crazy. So yeah, let's do it. And then he said, I think I can get Ted Holiday. And I thought, why? You know, the guy's a no-show. <laughs> so then I went to the <laughs> so then I went to the uh, the Impact 831 website, and it was exactly what Ted said he was going to do. It was these incredible photographs of all these cool businesses, and I thought, yeah, let's definitely do this. So, um, long story short, um, I got to spend a lot of time with Ted over the next several months, and we. Um, 
published at, with Matthew's help and a bunch of other people who are here, Julia is here, we published uh, two uh, issues of Instant Magazine. And um, what else? Oh, we did a crowdsourced photo essay at the Ma. We hung out with Zay Frank at the Ma. We had, it was a bunch of really cool stuff. Um, I got to point out that on the two covers of Instant Magazine, both of which Ted created amazing photographs for, we predicted the two biggest tech successes in the past year in Santa Cruz, because we had Lloyd Tab uh, from Looker on the first issue, and we had Saul Lippman from Tom Foolery on the second. So um, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> thanks for your patience. Um, oh, yeah. So in doing this, I got to spend a bunch of time at Studio Holiday, and I got to know a little bit about this man. And one thing about Ted, and coming from me, this is really something, is that he is really vulgar. Um, <laughs> Ted's, Ted's sense of humor is really, it's just dirty. I mean, um, you know, uh, <laughs> the way he related to Conrad and Eric, to his guys, it was, I mean, he would describe in detail. Kids, <laughs> the, he would describe in detail kind of the sex acts he had planned for them. <laughs> I mean, it was funny, but it was, it was kind of outrageous. And I thought, well, um, you know, he must just be a good, because they're just rolling with it. And I thought, well, he must just be a great boss. It's like he's, maybe he gives them lots of artistic freedom, and, you know, he's teaching them lots about design. And, and so, the, you know, and then I realized, no, I know what it is. He pays them. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I thought you liked it. So, um, <laughs> so um, some of you will remember when Ted had a, a company in an office and he lived in a house. And then he moved into the studio and he lived in a loft. Um, and now he lives in a Winnebago. Um, or an airstream. An air I'm sure that's a very important distinction. He lives in an airstream. <laughs> Um, uh, who saw the Super Bowl pictures that he posted on Facebook? Anybody see them? It was, you know, so Ted's posting these photographs through the window of the Winnebago under the, or of the Airstream. Uh, <laughs> you know, of the, the, he's got a big screen TV there, and it's the Super Bowl, and everybody was like, that is so awesome, that's so cool, a million, uh, you know, comments on Facebook, and I was like, he lives in a trailer. <laughs> down by the river. <laughs> and I guess when you look like that, anything you do is cool. <laughs> and I don't know if you know that Ted is now, you know, he's going to downsize again. So this summer we're going to see pictures of uh, Ted and Carolyn and the kids in a backpacking tent, you know, with a, with a, you know, watching Smith videos on an iPhone. Everybody's going to be like, that's the best. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're like, hey, that kind of sounds like fun. Um, so, but here was the other thing about the studio, and I got to hang out there a little bit, and, and um, you know, in the upstairs, in the loft, Ted just lived in a tiny part of that. Um, you know, a big chunk of it was actually a uh, wardrobe. It was, it, was, it was his closet. And in fact, that's why he moved into the trailer, because it's like, he just can't stop shopping, and uh, he needed more room for his clothes. Uh, the other thing that was in there, and at first I didn't know what it was, it was this it was kind of this contraption, so it's this little room, and there's shelves and shelves with these cylinders, and then there's contraption in the middle. And I, I couldn't figure out what this thing is until I remembered back in the 80s, it was gravity boots. And the cylinders were all hairspray, and I got to see it in action. You know, Ted gets in the thing, and flips upside down, and Conrad and Eric are just <laughs> And then he flips back up, and whoom. So that's the secret. That's, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> so this, this, is, this is the last thing. Um, um, oh, this is the second I last thing. I thought that was the last thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm gonna, so some of you uh, may have been shocked to see today in the Sentinel that Ted went to divinity school. And um, did you, anybody see that in the Sentinel, the story about it? And Ted's... Uh, um, father went to divinity school. His grandfather went to divinity school. Uh, his brothers are preachers or ministers. Uh, um, and you may think Ted really kind of fell far from, you know, his roots. Um, 
But the fact is, I think, he just kind of turned in a different direction. Because and the reason I know this, there was this beautiful um, uh, art piece that he had created. And it's an anchor. You know, Ted's a sailor, so that's some significance to that. And underneath it, it said, it takes strength to be gentle and kind. And I thought I recognized that. And I Googled it. Can you hear that? No? Gentle and kind. It's over. It's over. Yeah, so, um, and I saw in the, uh, he had, uh, I, got show, I got two little show and tell things here. One is a, um, this is a bumper sticker that Ted had on the Land Rover. I don't know if you can see it, um, or if you can recognize, if you can't recognize, he also has a, a painting hanging on the wall in the studio. Can you guys see that? So it's just, you know, Ted's still a believer. He just, he just, he's just found a new savior. So um, the, seeing the bumper sticker reminded me, I made, I'm going to make some bumper stickers up for y'all. Um, and I'm going to have these for sale after the event. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, great job, man. Um, okay, first of all, just before we get any further, God, I'm sorry about my voice. I'm losing my voice. How about this chair? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. From Echo Antique. Where, who are, where's um, Karen and Mike? Where, where are you guys? Stand up, guys. Okay. Yeah, stand up. They, they have an awesome antique shop, Echo Antique, so on SoCal. So we have them. Um, also, I want to thank some of our helpers. We have um, Katie. Where, where's Katie? Okay, Katie right there, thank you so much for helping with the chairs and helping out with everything. And then we have Fasu to help check out. Thank you very much. And I know I've got a couple other ones, but thank you very much. So I was disappointed, I must admit. I wanted, I wanted some like family members. You know, I was thinking about their kids. And then I was thinking like, okay, how about like maybe his ex-wife? Go, yeah, so she might have some dirt, right? She said no. Like she read too much. And then I said, okay, how about his, you know, his girlfriend? How about his wife and ex-wife and his current girlfriend again? What about that? Would that be good? No. They both said no. So I was like, okay, so you know, I asked his, you know, most of his family, they say no. You know, his brothers say no. Okay, they was like, no, I can't, I know they're in Portland, it's like that. It's like, so who can I get? And I was like, no, I just they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to come up. Nobody from his family. So finally I got somebody. Let's invite have over um, Art Holiday. <laughs> Yeah. All right, come on up. Oh. <laughs> Ted had no idea he was coming today. <laughs> it's all you, Art. You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. And thanks for the invite. I, I mean, I thought it was important to come up um, or come down from Seattle. We jumped in the car last night and I drove all the way here to be here. Not for Ted. <laughs> it's important for, I think, Santa Cruz to see that there are normal, some would say good looking holidays. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> and speaking of good looking, I mean, Ted's kids are here tonight, Ruby and Jude. Yeah. Some of the most beautiful kids I know. So I've ordered a paternity test. <laughs> it's just to be sure, because we're not sure. So um, I, I mean, I don't know what I can add. I mean, there's been a lot of um, insight. Some people know Ted very well. But I think as a family member, I, by the way, am not one of the preacher brothers. So just to, <laughs> um, but, um, you know, growing up with Ted, um, you know, I don't know if you know this, maybe uh, not everybody knows, but Ted was one of the middle child of five boys. I know, I was also shocked to find out Ted was a boy. <laughs> But growing up as a, as a middle child, he was always trying to keep up with his older brothers. And it was quite funny because uh, he was always like two minutes behind every conversation. 
And um, this is the God honest truth. <laughs> we, yeah. So, I mean, conversations would go something like this. So my, my other brother, um, Dave and I, uh, who's also older than him, would be sitting in the car, the whole family would be driving somewhere. And in our budding adolescent minds, puns were the sort of intellectual stimulation that we tried to attach ourselves to. So we would be driving around in the car and we'd see a cow. And my brother Dave would say, oh, look at that. That's utterly ridiculous. <laughs> Stupid pun. But, and then I would come back with some other pun like, um, yeah, you're trying to milk it for all it's worth. And, you know, we go back and forth like this. And, we, and then we would move on to another subject because eventually we'd exhaust those puns. And Ted's here like, you can see the wheels are spinning, right? <laughs> Mine's going. And we move on and we see a car or something. And um, my brother would say, oh, uh, you know, I get, that guy looks really tired. And I'm like, ah, uh -huh, funny, funny. Um, we'll see about that one. You know, we'd go on like this. <laughs> And then Ted would chirp in, ah, moving. I'm like, Ted, <laughs> we've moved past the cows like 10 minutes ago. We're on to another topic now. So. I was like 10. <laughs> I did hear somebody say, though, things haven't changed much. So I tend to, tend to agree with that. So. But um, yeah. So we went through that, and then um, so we grew up together, and uh, life went on, and years went by, and we all went, you know, I went to university, and he went to university, and eventually we kind of grew a little bit separate, and there was sort of this period of time where we didn't have a lot of communication. And next thing I know, Ted has reemerged from all of this experience, covered in tattoos, <laughs> and he's now got a... Um, defibrillator next to his heart, which he still has. Is that an iPhone? No. <laughs> no, no Apple branding on it. Um, so he has this because at one point his heart stopped and the doctors put this in so that it would, if it ever happened again, this defibrillator, if the beats went below a certain level, then it would kick in and it would give him a massive jolt and brings him back to life. And so we're all very happy about that. Uh, we don't know how this happened or what happened to his heart. I mean, the rumor is that there were no drugs involved. So. <laughs> it's just a rumor, though. But um, you can imagine having this defibrillator. And I mean, Ted has shared in times past, he's had a couple of uh, interesting uh, incidents as a result of that. Because over time, this thing became a little bit miscal miscalibrated and eventually it got to the point where it was like any, you know, you like jog down the stairs, then starts to get a shock or something. And uh, you know, the one day he's swimming in the ocean, and I think he's like surfing and frolicking, and somebody yells, shark! And next thing you know, poof, gets this kick, and he's under the water, and he's thinking he's going to drown. And so, you know, you can imagine the kind of scenarios that might get your heart rate up, <laughs> that where this kind of thing might happen, you know, like... <laughs> doing the funky Cole Medina and that kind of, so yeah so that also happened <laughs> so thankfully he went back to the doctor recalibrated everything's fine now so we're happy about that so very happy so I think everybody who knows Ted and you can probably tell just by looking at him <clears throat> Um, huge Morrissey fan, right? Somebody mentioned Smiths earlier. Morrissey is um, probably you know one of one of those people in his life. I mean, I, I'm convinced if Morrissey hadn't publicly declared that he's celibate, Ted would have proposed already. <laughs> That's how much he loves Morrissey. But Mo Ted's had a little bit of a bad luck streak with Morrissey because um, he has bought tickets to every show that comes within the United States, basically, to go see Morrissey. He came to visit me when I was living in Atlanta just to go see Morrissey. And more often than not, Morrissey has canceled the show because he's sick. Something comes up, he's got a cold or flu, he can't sing, he's not feeling well. And Ted has just been devastated, but he keeps coming back. 
keeps coming back, keeps buying the tickets. He's the first one in all of Santa Cruz to buy tickets for his upcoming show. And if you know, he's coming to Santa Cruz. Ted's got tickets already. San Jose, sorry. He's got tickets already, so well done there. Good luck this time. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean, just driving up here, I mean, I had long drives, so I could listen to a lot of radio and stuff. I, I just heard, I don't know, I heard he's, he's, um, he's not, I don't know, I heard some, I heard he's not doing too well. But, <laughs> I heard he's, I don't know, it's like a cold or something. Yeah. I, I, it's, no, 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 he's fine. He's fine. I, he's fine. No, no. <laughs> that's what I heard. That's what I heard. No, no, no. It's, he's he's all good. No, not really. I, I, yeah. I, no. No. He's fine. He's fine. He's 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 in the sun in New Jersey somewhere. You know, it's very sunny there. So he's not, he's not lost. Him. So so yeah. Good luck. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish. I mean if. Um, I think I'm just going to end with, by saying, um, you know, as has been said already, there comes that point in the, all the joking and, uh, you know, all the stories. And there is a reason we're here tonight and the reason I did drive up here. Actually, you do have a small part to play in the reason I drove up here. And that is to say that um, Ted is genuinely one of the um, kindest, um, big-hearted, people that I know, and he's got a passion for life that is um, contagious. And when I saw, you know, his passion for this event and for everything he's doing, I had to be here. So um, please don't forget to donate to the Ted's Hair Fund <laughs> on your way out. And um, I just want to say thanks again, Matt, for um, having me and um, love you, Ted. Thank you very much. All right. So I talked to all the roasters, and uh, I was saying, you know what? We're not real comedians. You know, it's going to be kind of tough. You know, it's like, I don't want to be talking for 10 minutes. I might kind of drag on. And everyone's like, oh, no, we want to talk for more than five minutes. It's, it's kind of tough. But, but somebody even said, you know what? Ted is so roastable. That was Iris. <laughs> and I don't think any of us have actually so far gone under, I gone over, oh, sorry, under five minutes yet. I think there's a lot we have. So we got to keep it at five minutes just in case, because then we're going to run out of time, and um, whoever the last person is, Margaret won't be able to roast him. <laughs> or we won't be able to hear Ian. Uh. So anyway, he was talking, uh, um, Art was talking about his trip down, and you know what? It was not a lonely trip. David Holliday, come up. Hey Ted. <laughs> wow. <coughs> He's got a full iPad full of stuff. I do, I do, I do. Only five minutes worth though. My name is David. They, they kept telling me that they're not going to come down. No, no, I'm not coming down. I can't make it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so I'm David, right? I'm also one of Ted's older, smarter, better looking, more educated, non asshole. <laughs> And better at Halo Brothers, so <clears throat> it's good to be here. And, you know, Ted keeps me hidden from you guys because I'm the one he's modeled his life after. So, <laughs> and this is why he does that. It's a, kind of an insecure thing, but it's okay. Being a brother, though, there's a lot of things you probably don't know about him, right? You know his professional life. I know a lot about his personal life. Mm. So, let me tell you just a couple stories. I won't make this long, but... Let's start out. When Ted was young, he was actually always fashionable. Like sometimes you think, yeah, you, you know, you grow into this. But Ted always knew it, ever, ever since he was a little kid. I remember we were at school one time, and I looked over, and I said, Ted, there's something sticking out of the collar of his shirt. And I said, Ted, what is that? <laughs> and uh, really? you know when you buy a shirt, right? Shh. You know when you buy a shirt. <laughs> It comes with all this packing material, right? You know, the cardboard under the collar. There's this little plastic thing you put under the, you know, the button, stuff like this. The pins that go in it. Well, Ted still had those in while he was wearing it. And so I looked, I said, I, 
I said, Ted, what, 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 is, what is this? He said, well, it helps keep the shirt stiff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. So I only bring that up because if you see <clears throat> something hanging out of Ted's shirt, and now that he's older, out of his pants, it's because it helps keep things stiff. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's, it's a sensitive subject, but you may also notice that Ted's a little bit insecure, right? He's covered his body in ink, you know, he's, he's embarrassed by it, but it's okay. It's okay, Ted. We love you. What you don't know, though, is that Ted actually has some tattoos that are hidden you don't know about. You've seen some of them, right? You've seen some of them. <laughs> now, there's a scary thought right there. <laughs> But let me just tell you about one of the hidden tattoos that he has, only one. A few years ago, he thought he'd be a clever, cheeky monkey, and he went out and he got a letter B tattooed on each of his butt cheeks, one on this side and one on the other side, right? You know, because B, B stands for bun and bun, right? So he thought, well, this would be the coolest thing, right? It's really clever. It's creative, right? He's a very creative guy. So he got tattooed a B and a V. And, he, and, you know, and then what he did is he went home. He's all happy. He's pleased. He was going to show his girlfriend. I think that was number 48, I think. <laughs> number 48. <clears throat> so he says, look, I'm going to show her this pair of bees. So he goes home, and he bends over. He drops his pants. And all she said was, who's Bob? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we wonder about Ted from that day on, too. We, we really did. I don't have bees on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> prove it! Please don't prove, prove it. it. Please don't prove it. <laughs> <clears throat> now, somebody mentioned before, too, that Ted is now living <clears throat> in an Airstream trailer out in the woods. But what people don't know about this whole move is it's not just a move about the Airstream. Ted is actually going to change careers. He probably hasn't told you this, has he? He's looking to become a motivational speaker. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I, I think that's really good. You'll do well at that, okay? Just like the B tattoos, you did well at that. But then all of a sudden I realized where I had seen this before. Ted is actually now Chris Farley living in a van down by the river. <laughs> and you know when Ted's belly gets a lot bigger and he decides to move in with you, that whole transformation will be complete. <laughs> now, let me show you one other story because this is very important. Because when you're creative, it's, you kind of seem like, wow, you know how to do everything, right? Well, let me tell you, Ted's culinary skills, cooking, are not that hot. When we were young kids, we would go on these car trips as a family, right? And it was somebody's job to help pack a lunch. And so my mom would bake this awesome homemade bread, big loaves of bread. And somebody's job in the family each time was to create or make sandwiches. So when Ted got up to make the sandwiches, what he would do is he could not slice that bread correctly. So he'd start slicing it. One end would be about this thin, paper thin. You could see light through it. The other end of the bread would be two inches thick. Okay? So he would take this bread, and you add mayonnaise, and you add pickles, and you leave this in a hot car all day. <laughs> and Ted became officially known as the worst sandwich hay maker in the history of mankind ever. Because if you take two pieces of bread with two inches of crust on each end, that comes out to four inches of jaw mashing horribleness. So, Ted's culinary skills are a little bit too lacking. Now, one last thing I like to mention about Ted, in conclusion, is you probably realize that Ted's pretty much the biggest promoter of himself by far. <laughs> we all know that how starved he is for attention. We all get this, right? It's not new news to any of us, is it? Right? But he does it very subtly. I, I, it's done very well. I like it. Right? He's like, oh, oh, you're interviewing me on the radio. I am so privileged to be here. <laughs> it's, it's an honor to be talking on the radio. And then he'll throw in some heartwarming story, like, you know, my dog is blind and he can't bark, but he loves your radio show, and it's helped him to bark again. And you're like, OK. <clears throat> and then under his breath, he goes, OK, now ask me a damn question about my amazing work. You know, even, even this roast, right? Even this roast. I mean, who needs so much attention that they promote their own roast? 
Seriously, right? <laughs> to prove this, so I'm, I'm kind of a numbers guy, right? <clears throat> so I looked on Facebook at this event. <laughs> and out of 35 comments, 25 were by Ted. <laughs> 71% of all the comments are by Ted, and this is a good rule of thumb about Ted. On any given project, event, or conversation that is about Ted, 71% of the hype will come from Ted. It is, probably, yeah, sorry. I'm trying to be nice tonight, sorry. <clears throat> so 71% of what you hear is so great about Ted will come directly from him. That's also part of the brilliance of my brother Ted, though. So what we've learned, what I've learned, as our brother Ted is fashionably stiff, <coughs> non-cooking, hidden tattoo, motivational speaker, living in a van down by the river, and 70% of what I just said came directly from Ted. <laughs> Ted, we love you, brother. Love you. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. Let's watch this. <laughs> no kissing. It's me. <laughs> um, okay, so, so we, we want to give you guys, everybody, because it was so nice you guys came out here. You know, there's like Warriors games, there's Pucha Kucha, Peach Kucha. I don't say that wrong, whatever that is. I say it wrong. Yeah, I'll never say it right. So we want to give you a gift. So in the Oprah fashion, go under your seat, lift your seat, and there's a gift under the chair. It's a parting gift. <laughs> Look what $10 on Amazon buys you. <laughs> okay, so let's get away from the family stuff. We're going to move on. Who do we have? Let's see. We have now. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Darren. Darren Kaz. Let's invite Darren Kaz up. Let's hear it again. Come on. <laughs> I've always thought I should have been placed up on a pedestal. It's about time. <laughs> Starting to think I should have prepared something. Hey, Ted. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm good. Good, good, good. Can you guys hear me? Do I need the mic? Yes. Yeah, I yes. Did, you do? Okay. Um, I gotta say, well, first of all, thanks for having me. I'll try and keep this brief. When, uh, when Matthew uh, contacted me about coming tonight, I gotta say my first reaction was, oh yeah, I am all over this. This is gonna be awesome. I get to come and roast my good buddy Ted and give him a hard time and I committed immediately and as soon as I hung up the phone, I realized, fuck, I'm not funny. <laughs> How did I get myself into this? Um, but anyway, here I am, fully committed. Yeah, th nice. Laugh at the cripple guy. <laughs> yeah. um, what's wrong with you people? Actually, uh, soak it up, because this is probably your last chance to laugh at a, a cripple and get away with it. So, um, come on. Ted? Yeah. <laughs> but enough about Ted, right. You know, usually the cadence of these things from the roasts I've seen, I've never done this before. Um, Starts out, you tear the ass end off the guy, you make fun of him, you ridicule him, you humiliate him, and then you, you end it with kind of a nice, warm, lovey hug thing. I'm gonna flip that whole thing around. Um, because I got my relationship with Ted and the way it began was, was pretty special. I, uh, when I came to Santa Cruz, uh, it was fairly early on, and uh, well, for Studio Holiday, in fact, I think you were just starting. Studio holiday, so we met professionally. We got together to talk about work and talk about design. And and uh, when you first meet Ted, I suspect all of you had a very similar experience than uh, as I did, because Ted walks in the room. He's a big guy. He's got a presence. You know, he's a tall guy, proud to be tall, shoulders back, chest out, and he, he makes an impact. And you know, we're both designers, we're kind of kindred spirits of sorts, and. Um, so we started talking about work and we're just catching up, getting to know each other, and, and the more I 
talked to Ted and the more Ted talked to me, um, it didn't take me long to realize that this guy is not very bright. <laughs> um, I know you know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm just getting started. Um, I'm not saying he's slow, but um, it does take him about an hour and a half to watch 60 Minutes. Um, <laughs> kind of known for being a little thick, kind of a, a dim bulb, you know, but when you get to know Ted, when you really get to know Ted, you realize he can't help it. <laughs> um, as it was mentioned earlier, Ted comes from a uh, kind of deeply religious background. He's a family man. He's close to his family. Clearly, his brothers are, are coming down from uh, Oregon for this night, which is... Uh, which is pretty special. I think your father was a minister as well, right? Um, and maybe things have changed a bit for you since then. You know, maybe you're not as deeply religious as you once were, but um, I, I remember a story uh, a, that Ted told me when he was a kid about, you know, wanting to ask God for a bicycle. And, but he knows that God doesn't work that way, so he stole one and asked for forgiveness. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, but but I know even though your life has changed a little bit, and maybe you aren't as as committed, maybe as you once were, maybe you are. I don't know, but I know that you know that Jesus loves you. It's just the rest of us that think you're an asshole. <laughs> oh yeah, he's very close to his family. I, I think someone may have mentioned his grandfather. I remember him telling me one time a story about his grandfather and that when the time comes, Ted wants to die peacefully in his sleep like his grandfather and, and not screaming and yelling like all the passengers in his car. <laughs> you'll get that later. You'll be driving home. That was, that was the best joke of the night. So, um, tattoos, we all know Ted's got a lot of tattoos, and which says you know a lot about the guy, mainly that he is not afraid to make commitments he will soon regret. Um, <laughs> like taking that job over the hill, right? I'm not saying the guy's got a problem with commitment, but, but uh, he's, he may be a little indecisive. I think Ted believes he's a little indecisive, but like the many shattered relationships of his past, he hasn't quite made that commitment yet. Um, you'll get that one later, too. Uh, um, but uh, I, I, as it relates to relationships, I don't think commitment is Ted's problem. Um, it, uh, um, I think Ted really knows how to treat a woman, uh, providing them, of course, you want them to think you're an asshole. Um, <laughs> that was funnier in my head. <laughs> it was funny enough. Yeah, okay. But Ted and I have a lot in common. We're both designers. I, like I said, I, you know, I think we connect on a on a different level. I mean, he really is an intensely talented, gifted guy, brilliant graphic designer, amazing photographer. Um, it's tough. Photography is a tough gig these days. I mean, you realize we all have iPhones now, right? <laughs> Even a hack like me can take a picture with an iPhone and make it reasonably good with Instagram, right? So if you're looking for a tip on how to make money in photography, sell your fucking camera, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> The good, to beat up a cripple. the good news, <laughs> I hope so. I hope he gets a chance to retaliate afterwards. Um, but the good news is Ted is creating a book of his work, um, which we're all, you know, I'm really excited about. But unfortunately, like Ted, it'll probably never come out. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, it's okay. Ted's, Ted's in touch with his feminine side, and I, I, I appreciate that. I respect that. Yeah, I gotta say, it's nice to see you there on that, on that pedestal and that throne. I've always thought that Ted should be placed high on a pedestal, but just far enough so we could see up his dress. <laughs> uh, yeah, he is in touch with his feminine side. In fact, uh, there, on more than one occasion, he's tried to get in touch with my feminine side. Um, I let him. <laughs> Tiger. 
Oh, man. Yeah, we do have a lot in common, Ted and I. You know, we both, we both are designers, like I said. We got a passion for the arts, passion for tattoos, old cars, love a stiff glass of whiskey. We're both having sex with your girlfriend. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Which one? I'm just realizing. <laughs> we haven't talked about We'll catch up later on that. Okay. So um, I'm obviously kidding. Uh, I kid because I love Ted. You're a special guy. Um, I deeply, deeply respect you and, and love you as a friend and brother. And I know you're always going to be in my life. And um, I got you probably don't even realize to what degree I care about you as a friend. I, I mean, if, if we were adrift at sea and both drowning and only had one life vest, I would miss you so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, the la and with all this, I hope you understand that we're kidding. The last thing I'd ever want to do is hurt you. The last thing, but it's still on the list. <laughs> we'll love you as a friend, respect you as a designer, as a creative spirit, and, um, and I hope you know we all just mean nothing but the best and wish you well and, and that none of us would be out here tonight if any of us had anything better to do. So, <laughs> that's it for me. We love you, man. Love you, too. Seriously. You're awesome, dude. Thank you. All right. Let's see where we get down. What's the best way? Same way? Anyway. Anyway. All right. Two, three. Okay, so we have two more. And we gotta get through these kind of fast. So like, each one of the next people has five minutes. Margaret, you're next. Margaret Rose is for Looker. Five minutes. Okay, so I'm not funny either. <laughs> and um, my daughter wasn't sure what I was doing up here tonight. Um, now they're gonna find out. So Ted, um, I, I knew about Ted before I met Ted. And the first thing I knew about Ted was uh, about the Betty Burgers sign. I remember seeing that years ago. And I was like, what misogynistic <laughs> asshole <laughs> created that? And thought that that was a good representation for Santa Cruz. Um, and so, you know, a year or so later, I, I don't know, maybe six months, I met, not sure about the timing, um, all of this community stuff started happening and we started having these dinners and, and then I met him. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, he is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> He's got so much attitude and that hair, what's with that hair? And, and we started working on this, community stuff together and we were all wanting to be part of this place called Next Space um, and he was he was on board too and he wanted to be part of it and um, it was like okay well so maybe he's you know maybe he's nice I mean he's kind of arrogant and but maybe he's maybe he's cool so <clears throat> we, we all we rally around Jeremy and we make Jeremy do this thing with Next Space and and then Jeremy's begging all of us to come in and, and, and please, please come in. Ted won't come. Ted doesn't come to the space. He designed the logo, for God's sakes. <laughs> and like, no, it wasn't good enough for Ted. <laughs> I realized, no, it wasn't the carpeting. It wasn't, no, no, I, I'm really convinced. I am convinced, well, they, they, there's new carpet now. There is new carpet, so maybe, maybe it'll meet your standards. But what I realized is there wasn't enough room for the hair. <laughs> and all of the hair products. Like you would have had to have an extra office and it was already kind of expensive and that would have been really expensive and that's a really bad joke. But <laughs> what, what I didn't know, and I'm just gonna get to the mushy part because I don't have very much time. Because um, I'm, I'm the warm hug. I, Ted um, is part, has been on this journey of community with me in Santa Cruz um, all along the way. Um, we've been kind of, uh, not necessarily side by side, but kind of in step with each other, um, basically being committed to this little community we have called Santa Cruz. And, and Ted has been a leader and really kind of 
setting the standard for what design is. Um, we can look at places like Verve and Penny Ice Creamery, and I will tell you that that Betty Burger sign probably <laughs> set the, set, started setting a, a tone and a mood for Santa Cruz that is what Santa Cruz is growing into. Um, and Ted has been that leader for us. Thank um, you. Yes. And that's really, really what, um, what you are. And to me, when, when you were talking about going over the hill and I was the one who said, yes, go. <laughs> um, but I didn't mean go. I just meant go, see what it's like, um, experiment. And um, for you to come back is like so exciting for me. And so I'm really glad to welcome you um, back. Like, it's not like you really left, because um, I know that you really can't leave. But um, there's more that I wanted to say. Oh, I do want you to know, does anybody know how to use these? Do you? Because do you, do you, these, these work really well. I actually teased my hair a little bit extra tonight, just for you. I used one of those. <laughs> do you see that? So, uh, <laughs> um, so the thing that I wanted to, um, what did I want to say? I don't know. Um, what I want to say is that um, Ted has, has been a, a leader in, in design in Santa Cruz and really creating a community that we can all be part of. Um, and you just, you keep our standard really high. And that's a really awesome thing. And so I think that I, I want to say a few words of a song. Um, by Morrissey. By Morrissey. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I want to say, sing your life. Any fool can think of words that rhyme. Many others do. Why don't you? Do you want to? Sing your life. Walk right up to the microphone and name the things you love, all the things that you loathe. Sing your life. The things that you love, the things that you loathe. Others sang your life tonight, but now is the chance to shine and have the pleasure of saying what you mean. Have the pleasure of meaning what you sing. Make no mistake, my friend, all of this will end, so sing it now. All of the things you love, all of the things you loathe. Sing your life, the things that you love, the things that you loathe. Don't leave it unsaid, somewhere in the wasteland of your head. Oh head, oh head, oh head. <laughs> and make no mistake, my friend. Your pointless life will end, but before you go, can you look at the truth? You have a lovely singing voice, a lovely singing voice, and all of those who sing on key, they stole the notion from you and me. So sing your life, sing your life. Thank you, Margaret. Four minutes and 44 seconds. Nice. <laughs> Okay, let's see if you can do it. Okay. Okay, Michael Hendricks, everybody. Boy, All right, nice. thank you. Thank you, thank you. Ted, I hope you noticed that I wore some pink chunky socks for you tonight, I so I hope we appreciate that. Uh, first, first, first time I met Ted was, uh, I think about 13 or 14 years ago. I had moved into uh, a small granny unit on the back of King Street with my expectant wife, and our neighbors were kind of some young hipster couple. So I came out one morning, it's kind of mid-morning, maybe around 10 a.m. or so, and I see my neighbor standing on his front porch, Ted Holiday, um, smoking a cigarette, laid in head to toe in tattoos, wearing nothing but a black, shiny pair of vinyl pants with the, with the, uh, with the little hip chain holding his wallet in, and about a half a can of Aquanet keeping the pump at the, uh, at the regulation 14-inch height. <laughs> so... So, you know, this guy, pretty, pretty interesting fellow. A few days later, he invited me into his home, and the uh, place had uh, something like a, a genus loci about the place, which means it's got kind of a special spirit about the place. And when you walked into the front, spirits it did have. There was a full rack, a rolling bar, with the, right next to the Max in a display. It was like this nice rolling cart with the full bar with, uh, I think, many single malt scotches on there, which is... Uh, Talisker is Ted's version of orange juice in the morning, so <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's how he gets his day rolling, usually. Um, so we, we became friends, we keep, became good buds, and I invited him to, uh, up to my brother's bachelor party. We've got a, a gold claim out in the boonies um, up in the Sierras, in a four-wheel drive to get into, and we did something, took about 12 guys back there, and we did something that, which was called the Mountain Olympics. We put together together a whole bunch of different random uh, type of events and there was teams and kind of a prize there so a couple of the events that I'd like to bring to note was one of them was 
was inner tube water polo. So we go down to the river and we get in these inner tubes. We've got a bunch of inner tubes. And uh, you set up some goals. So Ted was the only one out of the guys that uh, decided to play nude. So he gets, <laughs> he gets into the inner tube nude. And I swear, I've seen this six foot five, you know, pasty butt in the, in the middle of the woods from far away. Look, we thought that we saw a shaved version of Sasquatch up there. <laughs> So uh, after the inner tube water polo game, we, we decided to meander downriver in the inner tubes. And Ted, always being resourceful and prepared, had packed uh, a little Tupperware kit, which was his emergency first aid kit. And I thought, OK, this guy's ready for anything. There could be rattlesnakes down there. Could be cuts, you know, could be need band-aids. So we go down the river, and the next event was something called the CTL, which was a circumnavigator circumference the log. It's a big box canyon. There's a giant sugar pine log that's lodged about 30 feet above uh, the river, the water surface. And the challenge was, you go out there in your board shorts, you walk along the log, and then you have to hug the thing and make your way around the log without falling off like a, a cat about to hit the back of the water and try to make your way around, way around. Some people succeeded, others didn't. I have some great footage of Ted <laughs> from across the river. Most of, most of the time, you, you walk right out there and you kind of set up. Ted. Not only does he keep it, he puts on his wetsuit before he gets out there, but then instead of walking out on the log, he kind of starts to crawl out on the log <laughs> and his hands and feet very gingerly. And he gets about five feet out and then decides that he's shaking a little too much and <laughs> turns around and takes his way back to the other side of the log. And, and then he, he goes straight for his emergency first aid kit. And I'm thinking, what the hell has he got in there that's got to be so, so useful? So he opens up the first aid kit, and he's got, thank goodness, he's got his flask of Talisker, <laughs> a lighter, and a pack of camels in there. <laughs> Always prepared. So I would like to uh, raise a toast. I'm sorry we don't have cocktails here, but I'd like to raise a Me toast too. to uh, Tedophile Tommy Lee Holiday. And uh, always prepared, always genuine, and uh, good to have you back in Santa Cruz, bud. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Four minutes and five seconds. <clears throat> okay, so I want to thank you, Roasters. That was awesome. Now we're going to have three songs by Ian Bell. He's a um, talented songwriter. Boy, I wish I didn't have to talk. <laughs> talented songwriter and singer. And... Um, Ted really enjoys his music, so I thought he'd be a perfect person to play. So um, I'd like to invite Ian Bell to, to perform three songs. Ted, I'll get this wig back to you later. <laughs> oh, it's just greasy. Well, the first time I met Ted, I actually thought he was all right. <laughs> You're me. <laughs> I gotta got do something. Thanks for letting me play. <laughs> this is a song called The Tide's Coming In. This is for you, Ted. shake my black hand Staring at my white face pale, so pale in the rain It'll be warm come July Warm and brown In mainland Spain In the summertime Monday, new job in a suit New shots from Marks and Spencers And iron and shiny, shiny, shiny Safety boots Still no clue And Saturday comes Letting off steam Hangs like a rain cloud over the referee then it pisses down. I, I, 
I know where you're going, I know what you see Know what you're looking at, I've been where you've been Know where you're going, I can see what you've seen But the tide, the tide is coming in Oh, oh, and the water, it flows over Everything you've seen And the water, it rolls over one of your dreams it'll erase every one of your dreams we breathe the same air as all those middle class boys with cricket whites and well kept hair father buys them cars just to prove to his friends how really wealthy they are We settle for less Broken down voxel vivas, string pants and string vests Put us to the test I, I, I know where you're going, I know what you've seen Know what you're looking at, I've been where you've been Know where you're going, I can see what you've seen But the tide, the tide is coming in Oh, oh, and the water, it rolls over Everything you've seen And the water, it flows over Every one of your dreams It'll erase Every one of your dreams Saved your pennies all year Now you're here In brightly colored holiday clothes Sun when the time goes this time goes I, I, I know where you're going I know what you've seen Know where you're looking at I've been where you've been what you're doing I've been where you've been but the tide the tide is coming in will you shake my white hand staring at my black face pale so pale in the rain it'll be warm come July warm and brown in mainland Spain in the summertime Thank you It's funny when I lived in London we used to get tickets for Morrissey and he was always sick <laughs> This is called Recipe to Disappear Hold it so close, hold it so near You had the recipe to disappear Tell me what the ingredients were Any chance you could put this down in words down the stars we'll wipe off the shine I'll eat the list once you've wrote you've wrote it down got a recipe to disappear I'll come closer 
because it's getting cold. This is called String Me Up. Sees his father get pulled from the tracks Looking for a hand up a foothold to get back He's cutting cardboard in a soul's out for your shoes When it rains you'll have papé mache around your toes I'm just doing the best that I can but the union shop steward man He says we're going out First light for a fight It's warmer than the oil drums Than it is in our own homes Put your donkey jacket on We'll be gone for some time Some don't hate the frozen food When it's thawed and it's warm It's good for you And I'm sorry you've plastic football boots And yes, when the studs have worn down They've worn down for good I'm just doing the best that I can and the union shop steward man He said we're going out Fast light for a fight And it's warmer than the oil drums Than it is in our own home Put your donkey jacket on We'll be gone for some time and if I go back, they'll string me up I can't give you everything, but I could give you my love I could give you my love Give you my love Give you my love I could give you my love I could give you my 
If I go back, they'll string me up I can't give you everything, but I can give you my love Thank you. Thanks, Ted Holliday. That wasn't bad. That was not bad at all. Okay, except for my voice. Okay, so a couple of announcements real quick. Uh, real quick. If you have um, any pictures that you took, Matthew at eventsantacruz.com, and I'll put them on our website and stuff. Wow, it's going away. <clears throat> okay, I only have one more. Buy CDs. Ian's CDs are in the corner there. So we, if you want to hear his music, he has three, uh, two EPs and a live album. So in the corner right there, his CDs. Um, thank you to the roasters. <laughs> thank you to Ted. For being dead. <laughs> and we have to get out of here. So if you want coffee, coffee's still open. And if anybody wants help stacking up the chairs, that would be helpful. Thank you very much, guys. See you next time.